This is the Red All Over Reaction Show to Barnsley's 3-2 win at Bolton, but ultimately a 5-4 defeat on aggregate. The 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 tie had gone in the first leg, but a battling second half performance gave us half a chance for 15 minutes to go. Um, and we had a couple of opportunities, but ultimately the damage had been done in the first leg. So we're going to discuss that and sort of give a little bit of an overview of the season as a whole. And yeah, let's get into it. So, Andy, a, a little bit of a of a weird one of obviously winning three um, two, but it wasn't enough to actually see us make us way to Wembley. Um, and congratulations to Bolton for getting there. And it just it felt like the damage was done. Um, even more annoying when you sort of look at the final goal, which conceded on Friday night direct from a corner, such a soft goal that ultimately were the one that really took it away from us. I ain't got over that goal yet. I ain't got over the, 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 the two, the, the second and third goals on Friday night. It's too soon. It's not even a week yet. Still, it's going to take most of the summer to get over the two catastrophic mistakes from us as a as a defence. But, you know, last night, me and Alan, we were there, weren't we, Al? Shart, we were. Sharting his head off. And you, you got it, you caught it exactly right. Just right at the start. Congratulations to Bolton. Whatever you know, however you know, sort of gutted. I am gutted. However gutted you are, you got to say well done and good luck at, at Wembley. You know what? What, what you know? It should be a bit churlish to say anything different than that. So, well done to him. Um, I think last night had a, 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 a mixture really for me. We were behind the goal where I swear. I swear to God, and I guarantee that we'll have comments from Bolton fans saying he got ball first. Baxter Baxter did to Cosgrove what our goalkeeper allegedly did to their player for their second goal. No difference at all. Not long into the game, it was a penalty. You can all pile on if you want Bolton fans, because if you do, you know it's all a matter of bias and I support this, I support that. But if you say he got ball first and it weren't a penalty, you're wrong. But anyway, so having done that, and I thought, oh, flipping it, it, that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. And then, you know, Bol- Bolton had some good, some good passages of play, and we were, for me, a bit standing off from the quick. The, the, it, for me, the wrong team for, for, for bits of it, because down our left, their right-hand side, they got um, a Gomer and... Um, uh, who else have they got out there uh, that are quick, quick players and, you know, quicker, truthfully, quicker than Herbie and um, than Nicky Cadden. And, and and it showed that they had some danger there. So there were a few chances, you know, they were a good save from Colin, probably a good couple of saves from, um, from Roberts in that first half. And then a, 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 a bit of... Uh, I don't want to say good fortune at all. Well done to John McAtee in what we're all assuming is his last game. He battled for the ball, shrugged off their player, and I thought I thought tried to chip it into the top corner like he often does. And in comes the steam train that had been a steam train all match up to that point. Sam Cosgrove, have that son, have it. One nil up. He thought, no, no, this can't, this can't happen. Just can't happen. And then lo and behold. We did what we often did, except we didn't leave it to the last few minutes at second half. We did it in the last few minutes at first half. They had a passage of play, a good pass, a good pass across to put um, to put Aaron Collins in space. And I'll tell you now, he could have sat down, brewed a cup of tea, got back up, drunk it, and still had time to shoot because we just stood there and stood there and waited to see what he was going to do with it. Somebody should have come out and done for it got ball, whatever, put him under, but no, we just stood and stood and stood and he slotted it in. And that, that for me, were really disappointing because we didn't, uh, we yeah. didn't do all. It were a good shot. You know, he placed it well and what have you, placed it away from, from Roberts. So I'm not going to take it away from him as, as far as the shot's concerned, but it were a poor, poor goal to concede from a defensive point of view. And then you think, well, one all at half time and then we do what we did on <laughs> Friday night. We concede another. Flap at it, ball comes back in, and it's just an easy header from, ironically, from Toll, who, I don't know about arguments with Bolton fans about he should have been sent up on Friday night, 
what he comes up and um, and puts him in lead. I'm actually glad he didn't get sent off. If he'd been sent off on, on Friday night, he might well have missed the final. And I don't want that for any player. But, but you know, I, irony, irony, put it mildly, irony. Um, so at 1-0, one, 2-1 one down at half-time, you're thinking, well, that's that. And all we can do is go for it. And we did. We did. After, after a short while, Grant came on, played well, looked a, looked, looked a pretty decent player. And I, know, I, I understand we've got an option to buy him. I sincerely hope we do because he looks a, a tidy a tidy player. A big buzzer came on down, marauding, marauding down that right hand side. And it were like, I don't, I don't know, if, I don't know who he thought he was. I think he, he got it. It done not all us come off for Barry, but he got his head on him and by the good night, his long throws. I've said it before, so many exercises. And when you've got when you've got such as um, you've got such as Cosgrove up there, and like next season we'll have uh, Pines up there and all. Wow, that that could be somewhat else. That so ba Baza marauding down that right hand side. For once, he didn't fall down like tumble down Ted. He kept going and doing it. What and um, you know we pushed them and pushed them, and they looked a little bit for me a little bit nervy, even at two one up. But you know it well it, it it weren't too hard. And then all of a sudden. All of a sudden, up pops Phillips. And it was deflection and all that. Don't care. Don't care. So he's put free, hits it, deflected in. You think, two all, you're thinking, no, still two goals to go. But they were giving it a good go. A well done to him. They were giving it a right good go. Um, and then again, again, like in the first match, Conor Grant's got ball, moves it to one side, looks up. Sees Cosgrove moving, beautiful, beautiful clip, like Herbie did early on in season. He used to that early on in season, beautiful. And in he goes, the steam train. In he goes, bang, get in, three two. They were as nervous as hell at the end. They were slicing. They were all all sorts. That that they, they, they I, I think they they struck like that. They started to panic, and I would have, I would have if I'd have been them. Started to panic. But, you know, from their point of view, well done to them because they held on. And um, I managed to get to Wembley. So I said, good luck to them. Good luck to our friends <clears> at the Fan Zone podcast and all the rest of the Bolton fans. I I'll just say one last thing. I wish, I wish they, all season we've complained, or I have, in car to our, um, to people in my car with me about our, our car park attendance because it seems to take us for ages to get get out, even after we've done a red all over instant reaction show. My God, I could have, if I'd have stopped any longer, I'd have taken root. It were like people were there to start with, you know, getting you in position and telling you where to go and all that and that were fine. They all disappeared as far as I could see. It was it were, well, help, help yourselves. All them cars trying to get out, it took us a lifetime to get out and I were only going 20 odd, you know, only going to bake up. It was not like I were coming along M62 all the way home, so... Oh, that were that that were a bit rough. I don't know how they deal with that every every you know every home match, but don't matter. Does it? probably not have to do it again, unless unless they don't win at Wembley. I won't have to do it again next season. We'll probably get them in cup anyway. So yeah, we can't go a season without playing Bolton. Can I we? know I'm kind of sick of playing them now because we draw them in every single yeah. cup. We'll probably end up making it into Papa John's um, group and all, so we have to play them another two a couple of times as well. I'll. A little bit annoying in terms of obviously the goals that we conceded in the home leg were two uh, two very soft goals. One really well worked. The Aaron Collins one yesterday, no one closed him down quick enough. Again, no one coming out to, to to pressure the ball. You just see the sort of difference there of when we had that opportunity when Ricardo Santos made the mistake and Adam Phillips scored. The difference there of they've got three players, even at the scoreline it was at the time, trying to block that ball going in. And we were two nil up, uh, one one nil up, sorry, and we're not we're not showing that level of commitment, and we're the ones chasing the game. We were static, and both goals come from set set pieces. First goal for Collins were recycled from corner, wasn't it? And we should have done better against that as well. And you can't give makers a space and not shut space down. And they were just stood there like dustbins. Nobody were moving. Uh, uh, from my viewpoint, uh, opposite end, I thought Collins might have uh, got down. Not Collins. Uh, Roberts might have got down from Robert uh, Collins' shot. Uh, I thought he could have got a hand on it, but 
as it is, it went in, and then you're thinking, as Andy says, let's go in at one apiece. Game on, game on here. Uh, we can re regroup and uh, get, you know, have a team talk and go out there and leave everything on pitch, which they didn't second half. But unfortunately, uh, it was recycled from corner again, wasn't it? Uh, he just then managed to get a boot on it, X red. Uh, and as we said, tall, header, free header to put it in. And you think, you know, at 5 2 down, it's over. And you, you, you would have thought it were over. But when we come out that second half, oh, we went hell for leather. We weren't letting them uh, ride over us. And great goal by Phillips. Uh, to put it in, got a deflection, uh, and well well done by Cole to get it to Cosgrove, and a good move, I thought, to, to get it off Santos. And then, um, as I says, uh, when, when we put ball in, uh, it was brilliant to Cosgrove, and Warren Edder going across keeper. And we could, we could have equalised, we could have equalised the tie. Cosgrove had two good chances. Uh, that dark ball, what coming in the diving header, uh, and he didn't get it, and MDG hit it to, to side at netting. And then uh, Cole again flew down that left-hand side, put ball in, and it just got a deflection off their defender. What I think, on his chest, it, it just stopped him. If he didn't just missed him, he might have controlled it and been one-on-one with Baxter. But credit to the lads, you know, Credit to them. They put a shift in and we lost that tie 5-4 by one goal. And we lost it to four errors on set pieces, to be honest. Which, as I said, we know we know as frailties. So we need somebody to come in next season uh, and be a coach for set players. And I don't think zonal marking works for us. This is a weird one, though, because I'm sure with about four games left, we concede at least most of set pieces in the league. And then towards the end of the season, decided to make a top of that list by shipping two or three a game, which fair enough. Let's be top of it. Let's be top top of it, I suppose, instead of bottom. Um, Craig also finished the season hundred and one goals, which sounds great, but conceding eighty two um, throughout the entirety, obviously all competitions, is also not that great. And uh, as Al's mentioned there, the amount of errors which we've made throughout this tie in terms of, you look back at the first game, um, error for um, the penalty, error for the corner that went directly in, no one closing down for Collins' first, struggled again with a set with a set, set play for Bolton second last night. It's just, it's that Bolton haven't had to work hard to score five goals against us necessarily. There's only the first goal in which they did score. It's a really good passing move um, and actually carved us open. It almost felt like they didn't really have to get our first and second gear and we just gifted them a couple of goals. Yeah, I don't think they played great. I, I think we played okay. Um, I don't think we pressed as much as what we should have done. And I didn't think we, especially the first half, I thought we were pretty static just, just watching them, uh, the back three pass it around with the goalkeeper a lot of time. I were expecting us to come a lot more gung-ho than we did. But give credit to the lads. I think I think we put a fight up. It's more than a fight than I expected. I think it's more than a fight than they expected. Um, going into the game, I thought we were looking at probably five one something like that over the two legs. I didn't think we'd. I don't think we we could match them. Um, man for man, depth for depth. I think as midfield's probably better than theirs. But other than that, you know, we've been calling it since since the first game. Our defence has been our issue all season and it's continued to be. Um, it was fine when Pines come in and for the two games it looked like we got a solid defensive structure, then an injury come in and it, we went back to square one. We were just absolutely shipping goals for fun. That has been our massive Achilles heel all season. You know, it was, we, lost a, we lost a championship defence and we were, we we turned it into a non league defense, um, and Collins and his and his coaching team got them maybe to up to League Two standard, but it's not League One standard. It's still not. There needs to be work done over the summer. Um, things need to be addressed. Obviously, goalkeeper again. We've got to stop loaning goalkeepers in. We need a goalkeeper that's going to be here, going to be here for a few seasons, because that rapport with defenders, it's a thing. You know, a defender needs to know that his goal is going to come out. And you can't have that by keep loaning goalkeepers in. 
because they've all got different mannerisms, all got different things that they like to do. Um, I wonder if that's necessarily something we've done though, realistically, in the past. Because well, we've had we loaned Eisted yeah. and then we loaned. Yeah, but that, it's just like it's just the last two though. Like Eisted came in as basically an emergency loan because Brad Collins got injured. And then before that, we've had permanent keepers, haven't we? Really, I just, I just don't Davies. like loaning goalkeepers. I don't think I don't like loaning goalkeepers. I don't like loaning centre backs. They're the two positions I don't particularly like loaning. Even Bobby Thomas, I was a bit sceptical when he came in, but he proved me wrong. But it's just because I think that 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 them th- that core there, uh, uh, you can't have players coming without having a relationship because it's such a key part of the pitch. That's where you need to be. Talking and you need to you need to have a real good handle on each other's games for you to be effective. If you look at every successful team throughout, I mean throughout the years, you look at Man U side with Ferdinand and Vidic, Terry and uh, Kale. You know they've all got these. It's not exactly a great example though. They're not going to be loaning in defenders from Barcelona, are they? <clears throat> no, but you know what I'm saying. Level. You know, no, but you know what I'm saying. I'd rather, I'd rather. I mean, if you faced in two random defenders, right? Over the past five years, we've sold right our two main defenders and the goalkeeper twice. The first season we did it, we got relegated from Championship. Second re- season we did it, we've just been kicked out of playoffs. You know, so, but it's overall the season's better than I expected. It really, it really has been better than I expected, but. The reason why it doesn't feel great is because we had that thing called hope, where we had a hope of top two, and then we had a hope of getting in playoff final, and we've been kicked into touch both times. So it, it does feel like a bit somber towards the end. But look, if 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 you'd have, if you'd have said you make it to you make it to playoffs, but you get kicked out before the final, I'd have took that beginning of the season. So I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm not happy with it now because I am. You know, we, we were still in there, we were still fighting, we had a poor last couple of months, and that's what it's boiled down to for me, just a bad couple of months. But now, looking forward, it's, yet again, it's anxiety-inducing yet again, because we are gonna we don't know what manager's going to come in. You know, we're, I'm hoping personally for Duff to come back in, or, or somebody of that ilk. Um, but then again... It's all gone dead quiet, and when it goes dead quiet like this, next thing you know, it's going to be some Austrian guy who yeah. did a Bundesliga threes tied, and I don't know, top pressing charts five years ago, and he'll end up coming in. So, and also, I hope you're going to apologise if that doesn't happen. If it doesn't happen, then fair enough. Good. I know, but right. I hope you're going. I hope you're going to say so. No, I hope. But the, but I, the hope thing is, I hope they do come in and we win league. <clears throat> Look, it, we could get us. St- Right, because where I see it, it's fifty fifty with with these with this board. We're either going to get a shop, or we're going to get a stand up. There's no in between. You know what I mean? It's either you're going to get something that's terrible or something that's magnificent. You know that's the way I see it. And oh, do you know what? I just yeah, rather the, have the way we're going I, know what, I know what to expect. You it know what I'm saying? No matter which it is, no matter which is, if they're brilliant, they'll leave. If they if they're rubbish, they'll leave. Yeah, well, the way to leave if we can get promoted, that's my whole thing. If you get promoted, well, what's the point leaving? We haven't, we haven't had any manager leave when we've done... Well, we, we get promoted. Yeah, we get... But if you remember, a lot of people were saying we're going to get relegated. There were 18 teams below us. I think it's been a really, really weird season that I don't think, for the vast majority of it, we've not played particularly well. In fact, we've played awfully. So it's been boring somewhere in the past. Like you said, the crab football, the passing it about. And yeah, all that. To the eye, boring. it's been awful. To the eyes, at home awful. especially, it's been amplified by that because it's not not what you want. You know, we, we, we said we were employing somebody that are good. You know, we'll go for it, high press, whatever, go for it, pass and move, get run, get under them, and all that lot. And that's not what happened. But it it was apart from last bit, it was successful away from home because we had an incredible record away from home. We need now, to figure out this home form as well because that's I mean it's unacceptable. Yeah, but we, we should, need to replicate home... the away form as well. Because, you yeah. know, let's be right, we fi- we finished fifth, and it's only a number of weeks ago we could have finished second for a t- with a team that so many people were saying, mid-table, or we're in a relegation scrap. And truthfully, it's already started again. We're going to be in a relegation scrap next season. I it's already starting. I don't care well, what people think. Away. I care what I think. 
<laughs> Going back to the game yesterday anyway. Um, we're, back, uh, we're sick of talking about that. We lost. Get over it. Next. Well, well, Craig, you see, what, 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 what you're doing there is you're running next three weeks of content. Yeah. Uh, reviewing the season. Hey, look, oh, I'm an optimist. Good. I don't like to look at negativity. I like oh to look forward. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You are. Lad, you are. Lad, just, you just spent last, you spent last stop. five minutes moaning about lone goalkeepers and lone centre-halves. A stat. We've no, got a stat. that being yeah, negative? Managers. Are you moaning about it? That, that was that talking about preferences, not about whether I'm happy or not. Keep going, you like it. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding you, Craig. You keep going, love. I'm only well, we're kidding. Unbe- we're unbeaten in six away legs in playoffs, in semi-final playoffs last night. We, we still beat are, Birmingham, Alf. Huddersfield, Walsall. We beat Bolt- Bolton last night and we drew to Swansea and Bolton. So yeah. that's a good oh, start. Yeah. We're beaten. I told you what I think about them sort of stats. We lost Al. <laughs> yeah, we lost. We still lost Al. To stay in home side then. Um, Al, going back to yesterday, do you think there was a little bit of? Um, do you think, in a way, that three-one scoreline from the home leg helped us a little bit in terms of it's not cagey. Um, from the Bolton end as it started because it's not like there's only one goal in it and sort of first goal is going to really set set, set the tie like because we did score the first goal and it brought us back into it but we never we didn't set off with that vigour that you was necessarily if you are just one behind and sort of chasing it from the start in which we did do when we got to that point in the second half well I said first goal we're going to be crucial and we got that didn't we? We, 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 we and I thought we'd build on that I didn't think we'd let them into it as easy as we did I thought we'd push on, and I thought we could have gone in two 0 at half time if we if we'd have gone and took game more to them, uh, but we allowed them into the game, uh, and and that's wrong. That's wrong. Uh, I think we should have gone in, you know, equal uh, three apiece and been good at half time. But as I said, the two goals what we did concede again, we shot ourselves in foot, which it's been his downfall, hasn't it, for the season shooting himself in foot. Uh, it's not teams who's overrunners and uh, at times it's been our poor performances in defence, and we did that last night in second half. We get the ball away, and we were lucky that they didn't. You know, they got three on two, well, three on two with keeper, didn't they? Mm. When when he went forward and he hit across goal and it went wide. So uh, I was I was fuming. I was fuming. and and Jallo's uh, dad wasn't happy. I'll tell you that at that one, and uh, it was just one of them that we tried to play it out front back, and we get caught, and the, the pressed us and put us under some pressure. But for me, Bolton fans in that last uh, what ten minutes, they'd have had sweaty palms. I'm certain they'd have had sweaty palms. I think all that... I could see were nail biting from TV at home. Mm, Every I single think. fan, you, you had fourteen year old vaping, and you had all all the ones nail biting. So, <laughs> but I'd, when I went on the um, fan zone podcast, I did tell them watch out for second leg. I said we'll be better in in, in the away leg than we will in the home. So, it's yeah. been a disaster for worse. Got one thing right at least. It's been a disaster for <laughs> worse. Like I will be honest, um, Craig. One thing I did notice in that first half is a massive gap between the front two and the midfield three that sort of allowed, especially when Bolton did sort of take take control, it was a little bit back and forth the first 10 minutes. And then after the first 10 minutes, I thought Bolton did take control of the tie up until when we did um, score. And it sort of did set set them nerves. And one thing which I didn't notice was a massive gap between McAtee and Cosgrove and Connell, Herbie Kane and Phillips, which allowed a player of the quality of Josh Sheehan, the keys to Bolton basically he had at least 20 out of himself just to dictate play from there which is one thing I found very concerning if, of the team not pushing all the way up and sort of closing that gap down to that then invites the press of you make it a lot more compact which yeah. for me were a massive massive mistake because Herbie Kane didn't really look too at it um, in that first half and Luke obviously in that holding position seemed to change in the second half when I think Lucas sort of went a little bit more man for man with Josh Ian to try and actually stop him. And we had a lot more success from doing that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we, we, we seemed a bit defensive in first half yesterday. And I think that's what it was down to. Um, another thing, under Collins, uh, we had Adam Phillips playing primarily more as a 
right inside forward, so to speak, playing like the half space, um, to ready to press their their centre backs, but he, he played more as a he's been playing more as a central midfielder um, under Devaney, so I think that allowed that gap to be there. Um, that gap obviously closed up when we first liked to Grant on, um, because he played a little bit more forward than than the other two, um, <laughs> but uh, I mean the. They've got to start listening to me. I've been telling about Josh Sheehan all season. Every single video, nail that guy down, and you stop them playing. And we've not once managed to do it. You've just you've got you've got to understand how teams tick, and Bolton tick through that guy. He is a fantastic footballer. He's press resistant. He's a player that can just t pivot on his foot and he'll, he'll have the ball away. He knows where he's passing that ball before it gets to him. He's that good of a player and. Um, yeah, look, when you've got a player like that and we just allow him to play the way he wants and dictate it any way he sees fit, then, you know what I mean, they're going to have the most of the ball. They're going to they're gonna be able to... We had to press them. That's why I say we, we had to use the one thing we had on our side, which is young athletic players. The likes of Jallo, who we didn't fetch on. The, the, the likes of Devante Cole, when he fancies it every now and again. <laughs> the likes of McAtee, you know. We had we had to press and we had to from but we also run the risk then of running out of steam around the 60th minute, which is I think which is why the reason why we didn't because we've we've hit the hit the top of the hill um, around the 60th minute a bit too often this season, which has cost us a few points and uh, probably nearly cost us a lot more as well. But um, look, I thought we were, I didn't think I didn't think we were going to win these this playoff. Um, but we come a lot closer than I thought we would. So all you can do is applaud applaud Bolton. You know, they've got to go up this time. That Seriously, they have, because there's mm. some serious teams coming down. You know, I mean, I think we saw, I saw a picture on Twitter, uh, Birmingham's team that they're going to be coming down with. And Jesus. If they it's... keep them all, you know what happens. Yeah, yeah. What happens. Well, when, when teams get relegated, they've got to get high earners up. Mind you, there's one the plus team point. That finishes if, in the team that starts. Look at if us. they're in any sort of playoff position around November, they'll probably sack their manager and get relegated because they like doing that, don't they? It they did it with Gary season, Rowett and John Eustace. <laughs> both of them had a bit playoffs in championship, and both times they sacked them. Not to uh, mention Wayne so. Rooney. But I will say the 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 the. Got rid of Matt Roberts, so that big, uh, that big, that big uh, defender we've been talking about. I think it's time he come home, don't you? Two, two, I, I two, do. One, I, uh, I big defender, do, yeah. Big defender and a good throw. Or could they be? Oh, ah. and, and <laughs> he's about, about thirty-three. Him and Barry Cotter will be having um, contests at a training pitch. Who can throw it further? I think I'd rather Barry and Mark in box, to be honest. <laughs> Big Robbo on end of them. That'll be lovely. I'd rather I'd rather Barry be practicing his dribbling and actually know where he's going to go in by end of it. It worked yesterday. <laughs> did, the, <laughs> did the Barry uh, magic? He's, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's, def he's definitely he's uh, definitely one to watch, isn't he? Um, Mercurial. That's yeah. exactly what he is. Andy, I will I will say this, Josh. Oh, I, well, then. I will no. say this. Oh, you know, like I said, we had a funny old season, and it would have been a funny old two. Two game, two you know, two two games in the um, in the playoff semi final, but irrespective of anything that's gone before, I can personally say that I was incredibly proud of the of the players, particularly in the second half. We got to, we got to the playoffs, but in the second half, we were there, and you know, other people say, "Oh, could add the bands they're singing." I I've still got headache from the singing all around us. It <clears> was <throat> like it all game. It was loud all game, and. Um, People anywhere near me were proud of what they saw and proud of the team. So for that, for Martin, who's had a bit of stick and all that, for Martin and the players that were on the pitch and then came on the pitch, very well done. I, I was proud of them. Yeah, it was were, it were, it were Delta Andy he wasn't ready for Devaney. And do you know what? It, we, we held his own, you know, and I think our away fans this season have been absolutely fantastic. Every time I've watched a game, all I've heard is our fans. You know, um, I just wish it was the same at home. I really do. Um, but yeah, like best luck to Bolton though. I hope, um, I hope we see a, a good, a good matchup final. 
But um, yeah, next season. I just it, felt proud like... 2,000 fans last night because they couldn't clap the players off because I thought that they got a standing ovation from all the fans who were there last night. We knew they were going to be a pitch invasion. They deserved, they deserved an applause last night for the great determination and, and, and never say die attitude and credit. You know, I, I'm a proud tyke tonight. I'll get, mm. I'll get 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 Bolton fans the uh, the credit. They got on that pitch a lot quicker than it than it took Baxter to take goal kicks. I know <laughs> that. And they can. I had somebody commenting that Barnsley wasted more time than anybody else than Bolton by a country mile at first leg. I think uh, there's bias. There's bias, and this is just daftness. He, I'm sick of referees. They seem to bark Baxter. He does what he does. You know, he, he, he did. What hey, well, he was there. Did. It, it, uh, it's it, it's right. First leg, they're away from home. They just don't want they want to still be in it when the back time comes to home and then free one up. Takes takes yeah. a long time. Yeah, you know, takes, takes forty minutes to kick it out to his hand. Uh, forty mm. seconds to kick it out to his hand. I think he wasted about sixty minutes over over the whole two games. But the referees, not same for him. The referees for next season have got to crack down on how long it takes. Referee were off at what were running off pitch before he blew a whistle. <laughs> oh, you knew we were going to blow a whistle because he set up fast. That's it, yeah. He was, he was so. gone. He was gone. That's one thing, though, that's like dropped because at the start of the season, you're getting 12, 15 minutes each game added on, and it just died out sort of towards the end of the season. Of we'll just go back to what it was originally. You do one or two things, either buck them as soon as they start doing it, um, so they, they can't do it anymore, or they start adding definitely. loads of time on. But... My one gripe with that is it's going to be our five by time after games are finished if it's a tight one. Um, Al, you mentioned a lot there about sort of being proud of that sort of set second half, but for me, it's just a little bit frustrating that we didn't see that for 180 minutes instead of for instead of the 45. Because first leg, often puffed and never we re- re- sort of shot ourselves in the foot, and then. As you've all mentioned, in particular, Craig, that first half were very, almost a little bit pedestrian, a bit like, oh, we've got to, we've got to go for it here, but we never did. But when you look at it, for that second half, it was last forty-five minutes or fifty minutes for some of our players. So if you're not going to showcase on TV to try and get a contract, you'd be foolish, wouldn't you? It's true. Shop window time. Shop window time. Um, Andy, don't, say, don't mention Shaw. I think there's a few don't players been on that for Shaw. a while. <laughs> they give me palpitations. Yeah, not when we need a new manager. <laughs> don't be doing that. Bring back Marcus. Bring back Marcus. All is forgiven. <laughs> um, well, speaking of that new manager, it's not. Really, it's gone a little bit quiet again after we had sort of the murmurings of Thal Hammer um, and then Mike Williams and and then Michael Duff has somehow made his Richie way back Wellens. to. Um, top of the betting pile and Richard okay. Wellens at one point who shot himself all the way back down to being favourite. What uh, I know we've discussed it a little bit already, but what would you like to see from the next manager? Who are you asking that to? Andy. Oh, me? Oh, uh, I mean, I did say name at start of it, although I did I ramble on, I suppose. Um, I, we, we say, <laughs> some of this we say to, we say to every every season, don't we? We, need, we, just, we just need <laughs> On all sides, we need some consistency. We need a manager that is going to play attacking, attractive football, battling football, get under them, get forward, all that, all that. Stendhal, we conceded goals, but we scored more. I'm not saying that we should go all gung-ho, but we should make teams play, or play against teams that makes them realise they're in a game and, and not just be on the same pitch. That, that's why I, I don't want any of that. I want something to get under. I also want some consistency <clears throat> of manager. I want some commitment from a manager. I don't suppose we'll get it, but it'd like be nice to have some consistency and sh- show some. Get the right man in, and show some consistency by backing him, both financially at different times when when finances allow, but also backing him to. So at the first, you know, the signs of trouble, and people weighing others down with Gary Mart and Gary Mart and all that. Just ignore all the baiters. If you think it's the right man, stick with the right man. For me, that's that's what we need to play in a certain way. Whatever formation we want, whether it's the formation we've got or 4-3-3 or 4-4-2, I don't mind, but stick with it and not change it. It worked for Bolton. It's taken them a few years 
to get to, well not to get to Wembley to, to hope if they get up to get there we need to show that level of commitment always both from players from the board from the manager or coach whatever you want to call them themselves that and for me I would not object at all to Michael Duff coming back because although off he went and he presumably earned a lot more money at, at Swansea um, he was a really for me a really really good fit for our club and they've been few and far between there's been some decent ones but more latterly, it's been few and far between. So him, I know Craig will argue with me. Grant McCann would be an alternative for me because I always liked his style of play, both as a player and as a manager. Um, so, but you know, the, 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 there's others. We've got to have somebody that sorts out the defence. <clears> and Craig says, you know, they need to listen to. Well, please listen to me. Get somebody stopping goalkeeper being balked all the time, and get somebody on the back post. We have eleven players back. And not one of them can stand on a damn post. You know, and we had players in front of, two players the other day, uh, last night, in front of goalie, and we're just watching them all the there. But we've got to stop in our position because it's just zonal marking. Mix it up, mix it up and show, you know, but show, show some everybody at the club and the fans, show some bottle and get behind them and stop. Stop the dragging down all the time. They're dragging down. It wears everybody out. That's about it. Hmm. Give nice. or we eat. Nicely put. Al, what would you like to see from um, the next manager that comes in? Well, if it's true, I think I've seen Sam Jones put a post on saying that uh, Duff's going to be announced on Friday. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. It's all speculation, isn't it? It's still oh, favourite. I hope not, because that means we'll have to do an emergency show on Friday. Oh, dear. I'm, You'll have to do something like that. I'm off on holiday on Saturday. <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm, you know, fingers crossed. Oh, hopefully, you can go on holiday and notes, notes uh, mention. No, it's We've all right. Got... I can, I'll, uh, I'll dial in from Marbella. That's no bother. But we've, we've got to get somebody in quick, sharpish. We can't hold on. It's as simple as that. We can't wait while six weeks before the season starts. It's got to be done now. We've got to sort it out swiftly, promptly, and we, we need to know where we're going. And if we don't, we're shooting us in foot again. And mm. that's poor, poor by the board. Mm. Craig, building on what Al just said there, do you believe in the board to, one, act fast, and two, get the right person in? Because you'd like to think, given that Neil Collins... Sacks at the point in which he was sacked, um, and the well, it seems like the idea was Dal Hammer to come in and take his point of place, and then found out the bloke they wanted didn't couldn't actually qualify for a work permit. Do you back the board to go and sort of make the right decision and make it sharpish? Um, but seventy percent sure that they'll make a, the right the right appointment. And yes, I think I think they've 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 got to get it in soon. Um, I think last video I, I give many reasons why it needs to happen as soon as possible. And the one reason is if you want to renew some of these contracts, they want to know what the future is. They want to know who, who it's under, who, who's going to be at the reins. For me, Michael Duff. I mean, is look last season he really built something, and it could have it could have continued with that, but. As a father myself, um, it was closer to his kids. He also um, wore more money for his family, so I completely understand why why he left. Although I wasn't happy at the time, um, so I, he's he's my number one. My number two is Paul Eckingbottom. I think he's been at Sheffield United, he's been at Premier League, he's been at Championship. He's worked a lot with the three at the back system, which seems to be the system that the owners want us to play for some reason. Um, so I think it's it, it's probably a good time for him to come back. You know, start and um, start in a league where he can get his reputation back up because he's just come from Sheffield United where they got battered every week. And at least he can come to Barnsley, who's gonna be one of the top ten teams in the league and be able to build from a good pre season base. Um, and Grant McCann as well. Um, since I since I uh, knocked Andy down last time he said it, 
I've done a bit. I've done a bit more stat. I knew though, it. Craig. I knew what you thought. You see, so I just, I was just doing that, just trying to get you, get your yeah. gander up. No, no. To be fair, to be fair, I've been looking at. I've been. I've looked a bit closer. Glad. You know, not just a glancing blow. Like, like, but I've looked, and he seems a stable manager. Not, not outstanding in any particular area, but he's a good, consistent manager that does give get results. You know, he doesn't plummet like a stone. So you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, good just analogy start. for. Just... So, so we did drop like a stone, though it was just a lot later than I expected. <laughs> you know, with the last two months rather than just after Christmas. So, um, but yeah, they're, they're my three: uh, Michael Duff, Paula Kimbottom, and um, Grant McCann. Oh, but wow. I also think the Falhammer situation might stop the board from trying to go abroad again for mm. another manager. You know, especially if they want somebody in quick. So you know, yeah. there's plenty of managers can just get on that M1, you know, and be up here within uh, within a few bit, hours. I, I don't good. think Ricky Bottom had come back, lads, due to the fact what happened, why he left and went to Leeds because of yeah. what happened. To players, well, well, that could that, and, but that could have been down to two main board members. members. I'm, that, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not certain Paul had come back on that basis. I but, think, but I think it was more nice, like Conway but... Lee that he, that he didn't like. I don't think it was the board members that we've got now. I think it'd be difficult though. But it, w- but but it would up. need some talking round, I think, it's, and promises. You know, it's a lot to ask for someone who's just managing Premier All to come all the way back down to League One, to a side that's going to have a hell of a rebuild and all. You, you, I think it's it's asking a lot of that relationship with a club of sort of his ties to the club to try and drag him back. Because if I just bring Prem, I won't come. I, I won't come back down to a League One side. Can I just say as well, I'm actually pleased Devane has come out and said that he's not bothered about that he doesn't want the main job. I'm Mm. happy about that because it means he stays in the club. Exactly Mm. that. Exactly that. He's not done bad in 10 days, has he? He's done well. He's He's done done one, lost one, won one. He's done well. He has. He's done well. It's not really, like you said, Craig, one to... It was never going to be a perfect situation for him to walk into. It's not like it, it's not like when Eckingbottom walked into Lee Johnson after he left and sort of we'd started that role uh, moving it forward. It is kind of going to be a mini rebuild time. though this summer because we have got a lot of players leaving, a lot of players coming in, so we need an experienced manager who can make them connections fast and knows how to get the players on, a, on, a, on an even kill with each other. Mm-hmm. And, um, like you said, Craig, it needs to be early because, yeah, like I said, yeah. there's likely to be a, a, a high number of players leaving, whether it's the ones out of contract not re-signing, which would not surprise me if none of them re-signed, <laughs> who knows, the ones that were on loan going. And we've also got a lot of players that are out on loan um, that will mm. be coming back and all that. You know, it needs to sort it out. It, it, that, yeah. It all yeah, we can't send players out on loan if we don't know who a manager wants to keep. No. You mm-hmm. know? I think she- is- Shepard might be with Shout actually being a being a bench player this season because yeah. I think he's done well at Cheltenham. Yeah. I th- well, I think you like know. you mentioned there, in terms of losing players, we lost Eister because Michael Duff left. Yeah, exactly. And, and there were no there were no steer there, which um well, no m- doubt we'll cover it all in the season yeah, end, you know, season end review. Might be at last time I wear this shirt. You never know. Hopefully, no, you'll be you'll be bringing it, it back last out. T- today. Might be at last time I wear this shirt. Might be you'll bring it back was. out. It'll be an artifact in five years' time when you pull it back out. I uh, say, so remember, nice. remember that season. She'll be back up, bog roll. I'm glad you've got confidence. I'll be here in five years' time. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look, he's got, a tells... he's got a big birthday coming up this end of this month. I'll tell you. My brother tells me not. My me brother up. tells me not to buy any box sets. <laughs> don't want me to waste any money. Andy, a name from you in terms of someone you'd like to see take over? I've said, I've said them both. Duffo McCann. I'll uh, I'd take Duff back. I know he went uh, and left uh, under a cloud uh, when we thought we were going to have a, this season with him at the helm. Uh, but I'd definitely have, have him back. Uh, he knows the setup, uh, style of play, and uh, who knows, players. he might get his stead back. He knows most of the players as well already, already that relationship. Hmm. Which could actually plummet us forward in 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 terms of being ready for the new season. You know, I think um, it, it could potentially help keep some players as well. I'm thinking Adam Phillips, Luke O'Connell, like the better players who were under Duff of knowing he's coming back in and having that little bit of a rapport as well. Might would 
help ease that. Um, two, get down... two, play, two players that we, I mean, two managers that we normally get linked with um, that I've not heard is Mick McCarthy or Neil Warnock. <laughs> Mick McCarthy will never come back. He told us when we interviewed him for Heritage Project, he wants to be remembered as a player. He don't want to. He don't want to manage. Manage He's in Greece, isn't he now? And in Greece, managing. I don't know. I, I thought you were in Greece. I think the days of Mick McCarthy coming back are past. Oh, I don't know. I, I, well, I, I, that's the last I heard. I'd seen shouts of Warnock um, when Collins went, so I think Mick, Mick, Mick McCarthy's got a few years on him. Yeah, well, at Applewell, then he went to Cardiff, then he went to Blackpool. No, that was it. Applewell, that was in um, Greece. And Tel Aviv. At least we've not been linked with Sheffield, when, uh, Sheffield United's manager. That's uh, that's something that always gets linked to it. Oh, uh, uh, is it the... uh, old, old City manager? Old City manager, Lee. Uh, yeah. just got to... Ross in the... yeah. yeah. Yeah, get yeah. get your I'm thoughts down in the comments great. below who you'd like to see take over um, as Gaffer. Damien Duff's, Duff's still the... there. It's doing my head in. That's just Why people... is he still there? People Go type in wrong Duff. So, <laughs> someone said player. Michael Duff. Wrong Duff, wrong for. Duff. Somebody better, <laughs> wrong Duff. Oh, an, yeah. excellent, an excellent player, Damien Duff. But... Only Texas Tenor, though, to move that market. So it's only one person <laughs> yeah. that's best on wrong one. Yeah, get get down in comments below who you like to see take over. Um, any shouts, Neil Warnock, though, no, I'll delete that comment because just let let the man retire. He just wants to... He I just keep watching to... his podcast, you know. I can't help but love the guy. I think he's fantastic. Yeah, just let him retire because he's going to, like, other day when his, he... His wife will make sure, I think. <laughs> yeah. And when he's telling them tales back because uh, she'd, she'd had a dream that someone's going to score, so someone starts... On that yeah, day, see, yeah, like yeah. I can't, I, I, I can't have a manager doing that. I'm afraid I can't have someone <laughs> basing their things off dreams. Can I just thank all our subscribers, our viewers, and our sponsors? Uh, thanks very much uh, for this season. It's uh, been an up and down season, but you've been constantly with us. And uh, from all of us, th a big thank you. Yes, you certainly can do that. I'll. Um, and I'll second that as well. Thank you, everyone who's liked, shared, commented, um, donated to the channel, all our sponsors as well, um, just helping us sort of keep keep the lights on and improving the show this season. You've all been fantastic. It's been great to have the discussions down in the comments. It's been great on um, on the WhatsApp having these conversations, having discussions on Twitter, Facebook with all of you. Um, it's been another sort of fantastic season um, for the channel and just thank you to everyone that's watched engaged with content even if you're not Barnsley fans and you've been in the comments it's been nice to have them discussions as well um, with the teams that have been playing and things like that and yeah thank you very much to everyone that has interacted with our content we will be back next season and we've got loads coming up over the summer as well to keep you entertained oh, so we're end of season short nope. to come up as well nope. if you just let me finish before busting in I'm surprised you've not gone. I've got an away end coming up this week, by the way. Hey, what was it Ryan Reynolds and Andy? Oh, can't wait for that next season. Yeah, let's see if we get Ryan Reynolds for your way in direction. Ryan Reynolds. Let's 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 say him live. Let's get Rob McElhenney and uh Ryan Reynolds on. I'm not taking Smithy on it with me though. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll show him. So, yes, we will be back, as Andy's mentioned. Probably the next show will be, we might have a week off and then we'll come back to do our end of season review. Or if a manager's mm. installed. Watch this yeah. Watch this space. Mistakes have been made, positive stuff, negative stuff, mistakes have been made. Yeah, there's managers Great to speak about, players to speak about, board decisions to speak about as well. Um, we'll cover it all at some point in the future. It'll only be a week or two away. Um, and yeah, thank you for your continued support. We'll see you later, you Reds.